A demon lives in this city, Mr. Holmes. What is over there? A trip from which you will never return, Watson. Trust me, don't go there. Beyond that threshold is an abyss. Hell. He is an angry man in despair following a mistake that cannot be fixed. My goodness, Holmes, it was a slaughter. Hey, look, it's Mr. Detective. It's... Shh, I'm undercover on a special mission. Don't blow my cover. Aye, aye, Captain. We won't let it slip. Now, what are you doing in this area at such an hour? You're far from home, aren't you? We've come to give Pounce a hand. About his cat, you know. Downstairs round is a nasty old lady Big Danny lives. She threatens to kill Pounce's cat because she's allergic, or so she says. And it makes it cough and vomit just by seeing one. Allergic? Oh, that's it. She stoned Pounce and his cat yesterday, and the poor thing took off and hasn't been seen again. We've been looking for it, but nothing. Does that cat there belong to Pounce? Bert! That's my Bertie! Be careful, he is injured. Uh, let's take him to the pet shop. We might be able to take care of him. Let's go to the pet shop, children. If you all go in at once, you'll scare the animals. Pounce, come with me. Everyone else, stay here. What can I do for you? I have come to turn your mask. Ah, thank you. If you need something else, do not hesitate. May I present young Pounce and his cat, Bert? Poor Bert, he's been injured. It's Big Danny who threw a cobblestone at him. Big Danny? Danny the Jaw? The Terror of the Highlands? Oi, that's her, mister. You know this lady? Lady is not the appropriate word. Fury, more likely. Danny is a night worker. Before that, she performed in a circus where she fought against men for a penny a round. It was said that she never lost a fight. Is there anything you can do for poor Bert? I don't know. This cat seems to be in a sorry state. I have a book on cats over there. Can you find it while I look at its wound? Yes. So as you can likely tell, we're now in the adventure part of the game. Not much of historical significance is going to occur, but I'll point it out where I can here. Aha! This must be the cat book Abraham needs. What can I do? Here is the book on cats. Thank you, my man. I will see what I can do for this cat. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. This Danny doesn't really seem like too nice of a person. Still, we're going to see what we can find at the police station, but Terror of the Highlands is a hell of a description to give to someone. I can't just waltz into the police station to ask if they've got Squibby locked up. I'll have to come up with a ploy to find out if he's actually there. Then I'll need to get the policeman to leave for just a few minutes so I can talk to the prisoner. Okay, let's see what we can cook up then. So, you little jackanapes. You want to ride on the big whirly? Hmm, another day perhaps, ma'am. Yes, another day indeed. Although it's interesting why Danny's hanging round outside a police station. As a matter of fact, I would like to know if a chap I know called Squibby happens to be in this police station, and how many policemen are inside. Information? Yes, but time is money for me, you know. Here are a few guineas. So, Squibby. I'll tell you everything that I know, my ducky. Nothing. Ha! <laughs> 
I know nothing about whether Squibby is there and I don't give a damn. The Bobbies don't whisper sweet nothings to me, like the girls in the nice places. And now get lost before I get all worked up. Hey, if you have something to offer to a lady, I could tell you a little bit more, maybe. I'll be back. You do that. The girls from the nice houses, that monster. Oh, Danny must have been referring to establishments like Miss Bella's that Watson told me about. So that explains somewhat why Danny's hanging around outside the police station. Although given her reputation, I can't see her having much success with her wares, shall we say. Miss Bella might be able to lend a hand here. If anyone's going to know the word on the street on London's CD underbelly, I'm betting it's more than likely going to be her. Oh, hello, Lucy. Good evening, Lucy. Do you remember me? Mr. Holmes, come in. You're strangely dressed. What have you come to do in the area? I've come to ask if any of your colleagues, or perhaps even yourself, associate with any of the policemen from the local station. Certain girls go with police officers, it's true. But Bella would be able to tell you more than me. Well, that confirms the police rumour from Danny. So, let's see what Bella has to say regarding this, because, uh, hmm, controversy. You are a friend of Dr. Watson? Indeed. A fine man, you're Dr. Watson. He got me out of a damn business with one of my clients. We gave this boar a lesson to remember, and he's since gone to France, having snagged one of my best girls. But it's a break from all of her chatter. You're looking for information about the police, is that right? I can't help you there. The girls concerned are busy. And anyway, I don't have the time. What is bothering you so much? A client left me a case of bottles as payment. It happens all the time. I'm saddled with all this stuff. He told me that these perfumes were the latest thing straight from Paris. Well, I'd barely smelled the first one when I nearly fainted. There might be some good ones in there, but I'd have to find out if it's really perfume, so that it won't burn the skin off my pretty girls. Madam, I will undertake to tell you exactly which of these products are perfumes, if you agree to entrust them to me for a little while. In exchange, I would like to know more about Squibby. Yes, I know him. We've struck a deal, Mr. Holmes. I'll give you these bottles. <laughs> I will need a book to help me identify Miss Bella's perfume. I believe the bookshop on Glenworth Street, not far from Baker Street, has just reopened. Let's go and take a look. This seems to have developed somewhat into a fetch quest, which obviously isn't something that would have been done at the time, but hopefully it's going to bear fruit. Hello, sir. Hello. Are you the new bookseller in the neighbourhood? Yes. My name is Barnes. You're one of my first visitors. Welcome. What are you looking for? I'm looking for work that can help me identify perfumes, a book that deals with vegetation and its possible uses in the domain, for example. I would recommend the Encyclopedia Spartica about vegetation. It consists of a reference on the matter. This book is the most complete that there is. Fine, I will take it. But it's just that, um, <clears throat> I have no idea where it is. Would you believe that my predecessor classified works by their acquisition date? Nowadays, we advocate a thematic classification. However, I am getting down to the task. You aren't looking for anything concerning the history of the scripts. I'm fascinated by the subject, and I already have numerous books on the topic. It is no doubt very interesting, but I need this book Spartica without further delay. Fine, fine. I will try to find the acquisition date of this encyclopedia, Mr... Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Ah, fantastic. You are the man for the job. Perhaps you could try to find the missing dates. That will buy you some time. There are some dates missing? Yes. I forgot to mention that detail. The dates were written on cardstock attached to the columns, and there was one date per section. As one goes along, you will see there is no specific order, and certain are missing. I remade the labels, but I don't know where to put them. They're there on the counter. Are there any other details to know? The proprietor inscribed a date every two years since his arrival in 1864, up until now, that is, 1888. He left a note regarding his method of shelving, but I didn't understand a word. I do believe, in fact, that he was a bit mad. 
Well, I will see. Meet Barnes the bookseller. No information on whether he's related to Barnes and Noble. However, given that Barnes and Noble is a US company tracing its origins back to 1886 in the US, I find it highly unlikely. Barnes is an interesting character in the Frogwares Sherlock Holmes games. He appears in three of the games, with this being his first appearance chronologically, although not his first appearance in uh, all the games overall. He actually makes a much bigger impact in uh, Sherlock Holmes The Awakened and, and Sherlock Holmes Nemesis, which he foreshadows a bit here by letting us know about his fascination with the scripts, staring into the abyss and all that. In fact, uh, Sherlock Holmes The Awakened is actually due for a remastered uh, and re-release, which will be coming shortly, so I might actually, uh, I might actually do a run-through of both games like the old one and the new one so you can actually have a comparison between the uh, between the two games adventure games do sometimes take us away from the main plot as you're seeing here uh doing these little intricate puzzles do a do b do c etc and they can often take us down the wrong line entirely in terms of the main plot point but they do eventually bring us back to that main plot point so while everything that's going on here may have little historical significance it does add to the overall game there mr barnes the labels are in their correct places that should facilitate your classification have you found my book yes what luck it was to meet you it was acquired in 1882 I will look for it. Thank you very much. I would suggest that you organize your books quickly. I am in the habit of visiting my local bookstore at least once a week. You are right, Mr. Holmes. So this is mainly setting up the next minigame, where we'll have to piece together the sense given to us by Miss Bella, trying to figure out if any are of actual quality. Uh, my instinct on this says no, but we'll see what the three different parts of the fragrance show us and uh, whether any of them are of any use. This encyclopedia on plants and spices is just what I need to analyze these so-called perfumes. Let's return to Baker Street. Holmes is well known for his chemistry experiments and scientific analyses, some of which used methodologies which were extremely new at this point in history. Obviously, they add these to games, uh, pretty much all of them, really, for Sherlock Holmes games in this manner. While we conduct the experiments, I thought I'd discuss how I'm going to structure this going forward, as there's a lot of information I would like to include. The first of which is going to be dramatizations of the inquests into the murders. For those of you not in the know, when an unexplained death is discovered, there is an inquest involving the coroner, police, witnesses, etc. in order to best ascertain the manner of death of the individual. This is usually only down to accident or natural causes, or in the case of our victim, willful murder by person or persons unknown. This gives further direction in case any further inquiries are required. The transcripts of these inquests are matters of legal record and thus are intact on the Casebook website and I feel anything claiming to be historical should include them. Of course, these videos will contain descriptions of the injuries to the deceased, some of which are pretty shocking with women and children at the time being asked to leave the courtroom. Excellent. No, Obviously, if you have a sensitive step. disposition, I would not recommend you watch these videos. And in fact, the entire subject may be a little bit unpleasant for you to be watching. So don't worry. I will be interspersing the release of this playthrough with other videos. You uh, may remember the Hearts of Iron 4 yeah, video I released in, uh, recently. I and it's just to make sure the mood doesn't remain somber on this channel for months. And also to allow at least some videos to be monetized. By the end of this series, I hope that at least some of you will have learned something from the overall play. So, my dear man, have you reached a verdict? I have distinguished the good perfumes from the bad, but even the good ones are nothing more than common sense for adolescents. <sighs> Who cares? It'll freshen up a few of my girls. Wait, there's a perfume here called Valerian. What is it? It's not really a perfume, technically speaking, unless you like cats. It's more of a kind of medicine. It smells strange. I don't really like it. Here, I can give it to you. 
and I have some information. Squibby is most assuredly locked up at the police station hereabouts. It would also seem that he's the one who doesn't want to come out. Do you know someone by the name of Danny? Danny? Big Danny Nutcracker? <laughs> the one who hates cats? That's the one. You're interested in that kind of bird? Oh, be like dipping your biscuit in a pig's trough. She's dangerous, a real cyclone. So beware. And her appearance. She claims to adore perfumes. <laughs> She'd need this whole box to smell sweet. I doubt it'll take much to make Danny cooperate, uh, perhaps by offering her a little gift. So, Danny adores perfumes, huh? Can't say Miss Bella likes Danny very much, although that said, Danny's not really done much to endear herself to us. Nutcracker, though, ouch. Do you remember me? Would you be kind enough to help me by telling me how many policemen are inside in exchange for this bottle of perfume? This is Perfume. He's got a funny look on his face. Me, I want a pretty bottle with a button so that I can spray it all over myself, got it? Whoops, I guess I just threw a bottle of cat scent at her, didn't I? Probably best if I dress it up somewhat. This does actually fit in with Holmes's character. He was somewhat of a misogynist. Do you remember me? Would you be kind enough to help me by telling me how many policemen are inside in exchange for this bottle of perfume? There ain't much in the station. It was pretty busy, but now there's only one constable, dearie. There we are. Now Danny has been sprayed with valerian, a scent that's irresistible to cats. I must create a diversion in the street to make the policemen come out, but I need some cats. Lots of cats. To the pet shop. What can I do for you? So, how is Bert doing? Uh, he'll pull through. But he must eat, and I have no food for him here. We will need to find him some. And where can we get some cat food? We must find Hardiman. He sells meat for cats. It's around this time when he passes the end of the road. You might be in luck. You'll hear him from far away. He was always calling beep, beep. Thank you for everything, Mr. Solomonovich. So, Pounce, shall we look for the cat food seller? Poor Bert has to be fed, and I might have some work for you and your friends. So, knowing Danny's allergic to cats, we're going to set a load of them on her. Yeah, Holmes wasn't exactly an empathetic character to... But to be fair, this game hasn't set up Danny as a particularly nice character either. So, horses for courses, I suppose. Beep, beep. Good evening, sir. How do a little kebab for the cat? These little brats can't possibly all be yours. Pardon? Oh, no, none of them. Ah, children, there are pride and joy, and yet... Do cats really like kebabs? They adore them. How many would you like? I'll take the lot. I beg your pardon, sir? How much for the lot? For two pounds. They're all yours, my lord. It's a deal. Listen up, my little soldiers. You need to find all the cats in Whitechapel and lead them towards the police station. You'll be armed with delicious kebabs to entice them. Go, as quick as you can now. If my calculations are correct, the cats will be seduced by Danny's odour and will throw themselves on her. That should cause enough of a commotion to get the policemen to come out onto the street. We will come back to Hardiman later as he is a person of interest, certainly in recent years of development. Come on now, children. Let the cats alone. What's all this racket? Calm down. Come on, out. And make those cats shut up. Well now, let's see what I can do about Squibby. So with all the commotion outside, I feel sorry for the cats personally. 
We're going to try and speak to Squibby. Now, remember, all of this and much of the last video were all in aid of trying to get Squibby to give us some information on Dr. Tumblety, an American, supposedly, who may be connected to the murders. All of this seems to be linked around the trading of organs or bodies, which Watson also investigated. This was a very common theory around the Ripper murders, that profit was a motive. However, something tells me we're barking up the wrong tree here, especially with the absolute savagery with which the murders have been committed. Oh well, let's speak to Squibby. And who are you? I've come to talk to you about Tumblety. So you're here to kill me, are you? Absolutely not. I've come on behalf of someone you know, who told me you have some explosive news about this American. In exchange, he has settled your bill on the kayaks. You ain't no street person, you. You're a bobby, trying to wind me up, aren't you? Not at all. Will you agree to talk? Not a chance. I'll give nothing away for nothing. I don't have to follow Bluto's orders. I'm in it up to my neck, and the bobbies won't agree to keep me locked up here for the rest of my life. You mean to say that you are here of your own accord? Damn right. Only death awaits me out there. I was almost lynched because I was blamed for the murder of those poor girls who were chopped up like animals. The police put me here for my own safety. That's where this journalist showed up. A journalist? I socked him once for disrespecting me down at the pub. He said I'd pay for it one day. And that day came. He said he was going to squeal to the papers about me. With my description and my tattoos and all, I was arrested at the same time the police said they'd caught the Whitechapel killer. While waiting to write the article, he started the rumour. <sighs> now the streets ain't safe for me no more. I understand. Listen, if I find this journalist and make him promise to not write a word about you, and if I also agree to pay for you to get out of London, will you tell me everything you know about Tumblety? You sure know how to speak to ruffians, don't you? You got yourself a deal. What's the name of this journalist? Bulling. Tom Bulling. Tom Bulling? That name sounds familiar. That wouldn't be the journalist that Watson met at the Wasp's Nest. Huh? Ah, no, nothing. I was just thinking aloud. Well, I'll be going, Squibby. You're right. It ain't healthy here. I shall leave Bluto's treasure at the station. The police will know what to do with it. I shall leave Bluto's treasure at the station. The police will know what to do with it. Hey, but what are you up to here, you? Off with you and make it quick before I take you in. Let's go to the wasp's nest. Let's go to the wasp's nest. No, if Bluto sees me, it could prove to be quite dangerous. Let's return to Baker Street to change. Good evening. There'll be a nice tip in it for you if you can tell me if you recently saw a journalist here. Yes, sir. A damn nuisance, that man. And a real cad. He cursed me out something fierce for staining a book that he put down, even though it was him who was shaking so much that he soiled it with a whole lot of ale. He was reading a book? <laughs> Not a real book. A halfpenny rag. He put it down on the ground, and I put it in the paper bin for the stove. It should still be there if it weren't already put in the fire. Goodbye, miss. At your service, me lord. Some paper, ink stains. This must be the table where Bulling writes his copy. Similar to James Hardiman, Tom Bulling is an individual that we're going to come back to in the fullness of time. Again, he is a real-world individual and a person of interest. Uh, however, I want to go more in-depth on him when we have seen a bit more of him. Spring-heeled Jack, a fantastical character that terrorises the population of London. This journalist has some far from cheerful reading. Evening. A pint for me and have one for yourself. I'm looking for a journalist, a good client of yours. Goes by the name of Bulling. Ring any bells? I haven't seen him for a day or two. He must be sleeping it off somewhere. Where to hide from the landlord when you owe some serious bread? What paper does he work for? 
I don't know. But I can't believe that he works at his rag because he's always round the pub scribbling his useless papers. The last time I seen him, he spent all day at that table drinking and scratching away from morning till night. He finished by celebrating, and without the help of a rich chap, he would have fleeced me of a guinea. Thank you, my friend. That's nothing. Let's return to Baker Street. Tom Bulling isn't here, but the Baker Street Irregulars should be able to track him down. Perhaps Watson will have something to tell me in the morning. Up at last, Holmes. Were you able to get anything from that crook at the wasp's nest yesterday? Not yet, but I am working on it. And yourself, Watson, what were you able to find out from your colleague about the sale of second-hand female parts? Holmes? Well, actually... Let it be, Watson. It was tiring, no doubt. Well, as soon as I mention the possible existence of a black market dealing in human parts, everyone in the hospital became very tense. This silence, therefore, tells us more than anything else at this point. However, I have trouble believing that such a peculiar dealing as that involving Annie Chapman's uterus could have gone unnoticed in the medical community, if that is indeed what happened. That's my opinion, as well as that of my old university colleague. He maintains that any form of organ trafficking would be impossible, not to mention unnecessary. However, he did tell me something rather troubling. The unexplained disappearance of several corpses from the hospital morgue. He has allowed me to investigate, provided I do so discreetly. And here is what I found, concealed in what appeared to be a secret letterbox. Interesting. An encoded message. Indeed. And look, the symbol of a certain well-known Spartaca encyclopedia is printed on it. Perhaps it will help in deciphering the letter. Thank you, Watson. Are you going out again? I promised a new patient, Captain Stenick, I'd go round to examine him. He lives nearby. I may be back before you've had a chance to decipher this mysterious message. In a trivia point, Captain Stenick also makes further appearances in the Frogwares mythos. Holmes gives him a rather blunt and brutal talking to in The Awakened, which I still find hilarious, but that's not for this video. That will be the last... Uh, major work Let's in this video and we'll be spending much of the rest of the time solving the this puzzle which we're about to hear which will prove to be rather elementary I swear so where are we currently with this investigation we need to find Tom Bulling in order to stop him from threatening Squibby so that Squibby will rat on Dr. Tumblety We've confirmed there's no real market for organ trading, but that the whole bodies have gone missing during this course of time. While this is a side quest at best, really, as logically it can't be linked to the murders, it does give us an opportunity to further climb into London's seedy underbelly, and maybe we'll pick up some clues along the way. So with two murders confirmed, Polly Nichols and Annie Chapman, we can't rest on our laurels as we have to keep pressing for information. The area around Whitechapel is currently extremely dangerous and not just for the sex workers there. With fear ruling the streets, as we found with Squibby, even a rumour can be met with violent consequences. And given there is also a large amount of anti-Semitic feeling in the area, the whole of Whitehall is a powder keg, so we must be discreet in our investigations. Abilene was right that public knowledge of Holmes investigating the case would put even more pressure on an extremely stretched police force, and right now that's the last thing we need. It's actually a really useful exercise in this game of reading the room. I mentioned earlier that Tom Bulling and James Hardiman were persons of interest to our story. They're both real individuals, and they both have parts to play in this narrative. They will have their profiles gone into when the time is right. Given we've had a couple of videos entirely devoted to gameplay, without going too much into the historical aspects, next time we're going to dig more into the real world events of these times, and begin with the first dramatisation of the inquest into Polly Nichols. You'll hear from the witnesses, the police and the coroner about the horrible events of 31st of August 1888. While this inquest started 1st of September 1888, two weeks prior to where we are in the story, it did not conclude until the 22nd of September 1888. 
We will then move on to Annie Chapman's inquest of around the same time, and then we're going to move back to the game to continue Holmes' investigations. So, with that said, I will let this puzzle come to an end, and I will see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching and staying with this playthrough, even though it's taken a long time to get back on its tracks. Uh, I will add the usual like, comment, subscribe that you have to in all YouTube videos these days. I try not to uh, go into it too much. And with that, I will bid everyone a fond farewell for now, and I will see you all next time.